Hey there! Last year in October, a group of friends and myself decided that we wanted to do one of those many devs, one art pack type of jams. It took forever to wrap this video up, including broken laptops, lost footage and of course busy lives. Now it's finally finished and before we start, a short disclaimer. I will put all the important links to the profiles of the other developers and yeah, their games and everything you need to know into the description. If you want to support my channel, then please give the subscribe and like button a big smack. With that being said, let's jam! We are six developers making games in eight hours using KKIT asset packs. In this group jam, I will be joined by my friends Guy, Janus, Joe, Sam and Christoph. The rules are simple. We all use the Godot 4 engine to create a game in 8 non-consecutive hours using up to 2 KKIT asset packs. Fonts, music and sound effects can be sourced from anywhere. In this video, each developer will then show how they created their game and the other developers will play the game. Every developer can select up to 2 packs that K offers. If you don't know the KKIT packs, you should absolutely check them out. They are free and have a super nice quality. With that being said, let's go! Hey, so let's do a little breakdown of the car game I made for this jam. So the first thing, I got this directional camera script that I wrote for another project. I didn't actually write it. It was Harmony wrote the script, but I just stole it. And you know, you can like hold in the middle mouse button and zoom around. And so that's the camera script. And then for building the maps, I was thinking about putting everything on a grid map, but the props just align really nicely. So I just put on snap to grid and yeah, that was it. And then what I did for the pieces was I just turned each one of them into their own scene where uh, I added like some omni lights and some other little props and stuff. And then for the navigation of the agents around the map, I just put all these hitboxes so that like, you know, it, it would know this hitbox means that there's a connection to the left and right and stuff. Yeah, and then the last thing is just like, to make the thing all pretty, I did some stuff. Like I made the surfaces here a bit more reflective. I added some rain using GPU particles. Uh, I added this fog volume to kind of make it look like the rain was kind of splattering against the ground. And you can see I also added a depth of field to the camera so that it kind of looks like a macro photography. And then um, I just used a bunch of tweens and stuff to move the guys around. Anyway, it was a fun little game to make. I'm really, really impressed by Godot's like rendering of these kind of props and stuff. I think it looks really good for the amount of time I put into it. So that's the uh, breakdown of the game. Super cool. One, immediately, I love the look. Kind of a flat color background, but with some really nice lighting effects. Um, oh, this looks really nice. First of all, visuals, absolutely fantastic. There's no music, no audio effects. I'm quite happy with that. You know, it's a game jam game. That's cool. Oh, are these, okay, I see these little cubes over here. Is that kind of movement? So if I click here, oh yeah, okay. So it's it's kind of turn-based then. Okay, so I went into a bank. Okay, so something's clearly happening. Okay, so if I go R. Oh, okay. So it takes one turn to rob the bank, I think. I'm putting it all together. I'm not totally sure if I'm doing it correctly. There's a character there and they go into a bank. I think I need to stop them. This car in the corner. Okay, slowly I understand this. Ah, I can move too. It's got two green cubes and there's a... Oh! Oh! I can then choose how far I want to go. I'm beginning to understand this. All right, all right. Okay, so restart the game. I think we know what we're doing. If I run over this guy... Okay, oh, so I knocked him off. All right, okay, well, if that's, if that's the core point of the game, I think I've got it. This is really cool, by the way. Again, seriously, the vibe of this game is awesome. And the turn. <laughs> I think his days of freedom are numbered, by the way. He just uh, stole money from bank. Oh, next level. There are multiple levels. What? A car. It's got, it's got three green cubes. I'm not sure what the green cubes are. I think... Nope. I'm, I, I don't know yet. Okay. Anyways, there's a bank over there. Are there camera controls? There aren't any camera controls, are there? Okay. But how can I... Ah, oh, okay, now this makes sense. <gasps> Middle mouse button. God damn it. And then, I don't know if this car over here is bad or not, but just assuming it is, I'll just keep my police car kind of <laughs> on defense and turn. Oh, yeah, sure enough. Okay. All right, we got a real fight going on here. 
Yeah, you can try to escape. And though no, my little police guy has, has died and the car is also on the run. The criminals on foot can't beat my cars. Why don't you just let me rotate around? Now I have to peek around like that. Goes in there, loses one point. That's a police officer. <laughs> what? Okay. <gasps> Running away. No, you don't. No, you don't. Wait, let me just uh, not rotate my camera. Wow, that's so cool. I like just discovering that mechanic that if you lose your car or if the enemy loses their car, it's not actually game over yet. That's very cool. Very nice. Let's get the next level. Um, all right. So all I see is this enemy car over here. I'm just trying to plan my moves out. Um, so I guess I'll just line this guy up right here and I'll just move this other car right behind him just in case. But no, 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 that wasn't my intention. No, the car got away. Let's restart. Oh God, this is getting more and more complicated. One cop here, one cop here and just one criminal. I guess it's a smooth criminal. Okay, man, we got another level. Again, I'm just super impressed with the amount of content some of you guys have made in eight hours. Having like all these different levels, um, all of you did that really well. Also, I gotta say, some of the, uh, as, as well as the visual effects, the rain and the motion blur, this is probably the nicest looking game so far. It's super cool, huge fan, really well done. Damn, look at, look at these cars, they're super far. Why are they so far? It's quite, it's quite scary when you think about it, that you're doing your best, you're going there as quickly as you can and they still rob the bank, it's terrible. You win, really awesome. Again, man, super cool game. I think the best looking visually that I've played so far, I got a couple others to play. Um, the gameplay mechanics were great. Um, again, a tiny little tutorial might've helped, but it was pretty easy to figure out. Uh, visuals, just awesome, cool sound effects. I know, a quick feedback regarding this one. I thought the visuals were fantastic. The fog was lovely. Um, you know, the, the glow in the volumetric fog, that's always nice, that's always nice. Um, it, it, it was a little tougher to understand at first, um, but then once I got the basics down, the basics of the design down, it was, it was enjoyable, it was enjoyable. And it was nice and sweet and fast. I like that, I like that. Hey, my name is Guy. When we were doing this jam, I was working on this game called Crossroad OS, which is based around these Sokoban-like puzzles. So I was in a bit of a Sokoban mindset and thinking about different Sokoban ideas. And one of the ideas that I quite liked was to make it more of a Metroidvania. So instead of just level by level, it's more of an open world that you explore uh, and you get abilities to solve puzzles that you couldn't solve before. Or maybe you can solve them in different ways to get to different parts of the world. It's a jam, so not everything turned out exactly as I planned, but I hope people still like what I made. All right, this is Sakovania. This is right off the bat, super cool. He's like wobbly, wobbly, wobbly. Love the sound effects. This is nice. <laughs> That's really cool. All right, there's this hovering arrow emoji telling me to go up, but I feel like Okay, <laughs> maybe that's part of the learning experience, so. Okay, so there's some bullet hell stuff. This is pretty cool. Oh, I went against the arrow, but I won. The camera is kind of cool, but it is a little shaky right now. Um, it'd be nice if that was a little smoother. Can't even remember all those assets in the pack. Ah, oh no. And even more traps. I, maybe it wasn't, wasn't that bad of an idea of going into that hole, so. All right, today I'm learning that I'm really bad at this type of game. Oh, of course, it started to work. Oh, it started to work then. Oh, no. I'm kind of curious to see how the other people do. <laughs> I'm really too dumb for this game. Okay, that's tricky. All right, it's not getting easier. Oh my gosh, I have no idea what just happened. I just started pressing buttons as fast as I could. Wow. <laughs> I love this part, that's my favorite part of it. And now it's Sokoban. Now I can start pushing some boxes. Missing wall? No worries. Oh no! Oh, I'm not much of a Sokoban player. I've tried. Oh, okay. Oh, so it really is like a, a Sokoban style game. Okay, I'm starting to see now. I love that it's Sokobania because it's a, it's a Metroidvania, isn't it? <laughs> that's cool, that's cool. 
Okay, so you push the barrels and it looks like they roll on one way and they don't roll the other way. Okay, that's really, really clever. Okay, cool. So I push this guy on here and then I gotta roll this other barrel over here. All right, I'm getting pretty good at it. Okay. I really like the sound effects here. Uh... There's a wizard. What are they? What are they doing? Ah, okay. So if they see me, they shoot. Right, gotcha. I thought they were gonna like lock me in there, but I just like ran by. <laughs> That's cool. I just like rolled over that guy. Haha. <laughs> Man, this is so cool. I just, you have so much content in here for this little game. I'm very impressed. I think it look, looks beautiful as well. This is like such a great job, whoever did this. And is it the final coin? Is it the victory? Whoa, okay, is this the end here with this little coin? No, it's a jump instead. Whoa, it's actually a metroidvania. I can jump? No, oh, I can jump now. That's awesome, okay. So where do I go with my newly learned ability then? I presume... Oh! Oh no. I presume I go down here. It looks a bit like they ran out of time. I just go real fast and get through it. Haha! I can just jump through this. Look. Jump. 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 Cool. Ooh. Okay. Boom. 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 Okay. We need to get to the beginning. I'm really curious to see other people play this game because I think I am uniquely bad at uh, this. Right? Yeah, there we go. All right, all right, all right, there we go, enough of this. Okay, oh, so now, oh, the arrow from the beginning. Okay, now do I jump? <laughs> nice, nice. And I won. Awesome. This was great. Like, wow. What a solid, like, piece of, piece of game. Really, really great job. <sighs> yes, I won. <laughs> That's so cool. Wow, I really like how you reincorporated all those old levels and made it so that you have to kind of jump your way back. Um, there's a couple new levels along the way that you get to. It actually is like Sokovania. It has some Sokobon and some Metroidvania elements. I would like to play more. Cool. Fun little game. Really nice idea. Checking out the asset packs, the one with the Mars surface vehicles and planetary surface really caught my attention. So I wanted to create a little base builder game. I never made something like that, so I wanted to use it as a learning experience. I imported all the meshes and started creating a grid map with all the terrain elements that the pack provides and built a little quick map. Next I set up the camera and the environment, so I got a nice idea how I wanted the game to look and feel and yeah, I really liked how it turned out. To break up the big shapes of the terrain, I wanted to create a cloud shadow. Um, I played around with different ways, but I really liked this one the most, it looked the most natural, just using a sphere and a shader. Then I created the mouse input to make sure the cursor matches the mouse position and to give the player some basic input. The next step was to combine all the different elements from the pack to make up the building scenes and add some basic scripts so the player can start putting buildings down on the map. It really helped to plan the project in Miro, so I had an idea of what the player can do, how the buildings interact. That helped me to make a system that is reusable and flexible. The building where I first started edit animations was the spaceport. I wanted the spaceship to arrive and fly away after it picked up the resources and I used the path for that and that worked pretty well. Next up was the mining drill and here I added um, some tween animations on the drill to make it look like it drills in, added some particles and there it was done. To make it easy to see where to place the drills I added an effect and a particle to the holes where you can place the drills. That really helped. Next, I started working on the drones that collect the ore and bring it back to the spaceport for pickup. I really enjoyed that as it brings a lot of life to the game seeing those little guys fly. I found the map a bit plain looking, so I copy and pasted over a ton of those stones. Next, I implemented the system for building radius and uh, added the HQ so you can place down HQs and increase your building radius. That made the whole game much more interesting. Buildings just appeared and I wanted an effect that looked like they are teleported down from space, so I added a shader and an animation. I also added sound effects and music. 
It was time to wrap the project up, so I added a really simple mission system, playtested a bit, and I am really happy how it turned out. All right, this is Mars Happy Life. Visually stunning. This looks amazing. Um, visually speaking, this is the best, this is the nicest game I've seen so far. Wow. Damn, that looks really polished. Okay, mission objective. Move the camera about. Mission complete. It's a low bar for mission, but maybe I'm just really, really good at this game. Also, just out of the box, I was just pressing keys. I didn't even see this mission objective, but there's missions and I just completed one. That's so cool. Yeah, this is really, really cool. I like the controls, just really, really tight. And I like the idea of this little world. A lot of options. So let's make a habitat. And that shader, wow. This is just really, really well done. I'm just so amazed. This is all eight hours. I bet it was a pretty intense eight hours where Pixar did not blink. Look at that animation. Oh my gosh, this is this is so cool and annoying, but really cool. Put our workers here, so it's going to be a habitat. Now on top of the habitat, we put a greenhouse. Wonderful, I'm beginning to understand this. Wind turbine, I love wind turbines. Okay, 400,000. So good, and I just noticed you can see the clouds in the sky going across. That's so, it's such a subtle touch, but like it adds a lot. It's great. Also, I haven't even commented the music in the background. The sound effects are really incredible. Um, all right, Greenhouse gives me food, but takes away people and power. Okay, fair trade off. A thousand, thousand. <laughs> I, I, I would, I, I think, I think it would just be simpler if, it, if the amount were in the hundreds or tens. But anyways. I don't seem to have the resources. So I'm missing 16 of something and eight of something. So maybe I have to build more. Right, a space pole. Right. We're going to build a space pole. Space pole. And then sure enough, you know, for all of our futuristic developments, wind turbines in the future do not look that much cooler than they do today. Um, maybe that's something we can work on in Mars in the future, but. See, I can't read whatever that Unicode error is, so. The only thing that I am not liking about the graphics, yeah, okay, let's be honest, the graphics here are flipping amazing, but the only thing I'm not liking is that it feels a little hazy, right? As in, I can't exactly focus on the details because it, it feels a little hazy. Apart from that, wonderful. Oh no, this is the this is the part where everyone realizes I'm stupid and everyone's shouting at the screen saying, Sam. All right, build a drill. Do I build that anywhere? No, I must build that on these glowing holes in the surface of Mars. Greenhouse wind turbine. Do I need another wind turbine? Oh, I need food, so I need a greenhouse. Right. And there is a little drone. Wow. And it just keeps going. I need more people and power. It's really nice that you've got this stuff built into the UI, so it just tells me right away what I need. I really appreciate that. Ah, we need another space port, don't we? Oh, yes, we do. Go grab him. Huge. Um, oh, I can expand a spaceport? I'm not, I don't really need to do that, but I'm going to, just because. That's, I just, these animations of the little drone and the spaceship are so cool. So are they actually, is this displaying, uh, giving me money? Yeah, it does. So 300k per trip. Oh yeah, that's so cool. So look at that, we got base in the valley, base in the mountains around the plateau. I can add more habitats in the middle. Hmm. I think I'm progressing quite nicely. Right. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Right, I need money for that one. Considering ho how many different objects were, were in, this, uh, in this asset pack, I I guess this game takes like creative use of all of all of all of them. So there's no there's no problems. Like I haven't run into any challenges yet, which again isn't a bad thing, but um that might be, you know, if we were to expand this game or do something with it. Um I mean there's so many things you could do, maybe fighting aliens or maybe I don't know lava monsters come out of the glowing ore veins when you build a drill or something like that or just like happiness. Like obviously 
city builders and simulation games have long figured out ways to handle problems like that. Yeah, good stuff. Can I upgrade the port? <gasps> no. Wait, yes I can. I can stack him? No way. That's awesome. All right, I see, I see. Maybe I need, oh, you know what I haven't noticed? These little red and green neon things. Oh, or depleted. No way. So does that mean, wow. Okay, so no longer is this, the glowing ore vein is gone. So do I just deconstruct it? If this game was made by the person who I think it was made by, right? Then, then one of the things that I distinctly remember them saying is, um, no worries, it's just, eight, it's just eight hours. We're not going to go overboard, are we now? No, 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 this is simple stuff. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll all be making simple games. <laughs> and now when you see this happening on your screen, what happened? What, what happened? <laughs> oh man, I love just these towering spaceports with all of the different drone landings. It's so cool. Um, Man, now that, okay, so like now look at this colony that's kind of been going for a while and you just see all the drones flying around and all of the spaceships coming in. Um, this is super cool. Like to see all this come together like this, that is really, really awesome. You are the employee of the month. Uh, Mars Happy Life Inc. expresses their gratitude. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is funny. Mars Happy Life Inc. expresses their gratitude. Um, yeah, regardless, this is whew, this is good stuff. This is a lot more than I would ever expect from uh, a jam game that took eight hours to make. This took eight hours to make? Yeah, this was really cool though. Excellent game, still hard to believe that you made this in eight hours. I'm very impressed, um, but just really cool. So great work overall, Mars happy life. And uh, I'm gonna be really looking forward to that amazing pizza party for my good work. As I was going through all of the K-Kit packs, for some reason, this little wrench for the engineer as part of the adventurers pack just stood out to me. And it immediately made me think of the movie Dodgeball and the quote that if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. And so immediately I knew once I saw this that I had to make a dodgeball game except you were gonna be dodging wrenches. So I started off just by trying to create a simple wrench throwing system like an FPS game and it was super fun, but I quickly realized that trying to control the wrenches via the physics system by making them rigid bodies was just a little too unpredictable. So I changed them to be area 3D so I could have a little bit more control over code about how the wrenches were thrown. Next, I wanted to start building up the level that the game would actually be played in. And I was trying to model this after a gym or a basketball court just to give it that dodgeball feel. But I quickly realized that I had a ton of features I would still need to add to make this work. So I just whipped together something that was pretty crappy. I wasn't super happy with it, but it was good enough just to start playing around with. Next up, I wanted to start working on enemy AI so that there was actually someone for the player to throw a wrench at. I decided to use this test dummy from the prototype pack to kind of be my NPC characters in this game, both enemies and teammates for the player. And I wrote this just super simple AI script that basically just made the enemy pick a random spot in their territory and move around. But it wasn't enough just for the enemy to move, they obviously had to be able to throw wrenches back at the player. And this was the part I was most worried about, whether I would even be able to get this working within the time for the game jam. Thankfully though, in Godot, with the skeleton system, it's really easy to make our enemy say, hold that wrench using a bone attachment node. And so I used that to attach it to the dummy's hand. It really helped too that the test dummy came with a bunch of nice animations just out of the box and so I was able to wire together this simple animation tree that blended between idle and running and then just had a one shot animation for throwing and picking up a wrench. And so once I had my animation tree, the visual part was all good to go. I just had to keep working on actually being able to pick up and throw the wrench for our enemy. But after a few minor visual bugs, I finally got it to where our enemy here could play the pickup animation and could throw the wrench and it would keep track of when it actually had a wrench or when it needed to go and search for a new one. I just needed to now implement that functionality where they could actually detect if there was a wrench on the ground and go pick it up. 
So I started working on wrenches that both the player and NPCs could pick up from the ground. I thought it'd be kind of funny to have them just spawn in from the ceiling and fall down, so I made a separate wrench scene just for these ground wrenches that would be tied to the physics engine and kind of bounce around and fall from the ceiling of the gym, and I thought it overall turned out pretty well. And I made it so that as soon as a player or an NPC picked up a wrench from the ground, a new one would spawn. So there was always a wrench there that an NPC or player could pick up to throw and it wouldn't ever pause the game waiting for another wrench to drop. And then finally, with just a couple of hours left, I added a system where NPCs actually received the location of the closest wrench on the ground. So they knew where to go to pick one up. I added a ray cast for the player so that the player could detect when a wrench was in the middle of their screen and they could actually pick one up too. And some help text just to make it clear to the player when they were actually looking at a wrench. I had about 30 minutes left at this point and so I wanted to finish my time by just adding a main menu and some simple UI stuff just to polish the game. I may have gone ever so slightly above eight hours doing this, but I thought the main menu that I created just added a nice intro to the game and really tied it all together. If I had more time, I wish I could have made the game actually look better. There was really no visual polish and I wish I could have made the death animation for when the player wins or loses. I wish it just would have been a little less abrupt. So that was the next up on my to-do list, but overall for eight hours, I had a blast making this game and I'm really happy with how Wrench Ball turned out. This looks like fun. All right, and here we are playing a wrench ball. This is the first game that I know of that has um, a, 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 a main menu. Oh, cool. Hey, I can jump. There's wrenches and thrown wrenches. Oh, we have a team-based game. Can my team win without me? Yeah. And I won. Okay, not sure why I won, but... Um... I like that I won. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the concept. Although it doesn't have too much things yet, I guess it has quite a quite something something unique to it. Alright, so I'm running. Pick up, pick up F. No, F, yes, and bro. Oh cool. Cool. Okay. Uh <laughs> oh, I was close. Dodge whoa. It's, it's, I, I like how it gets real close to your face. Ha ah, victory! <laughs> okay, this would be fun as a uh, as a multiplayer game. I want to kill my teammates and then steal the victory. Let's do so. All right, now I'm one against three. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! It's not as easy as I thought. It would be nice if the princes actually stay down and the other people can pick them up. <laughs> I like how they just fall over right in their back. That's funny. Okay, so you, oh, defeat, wrench to the face. Mm -hmm. That's how I felt right there. Ooh, okay, this is, this is, oh, this actually felt really good. Okay, let's do this again. I want to catch it out of the air. I don't even know if I can lose. <laughs> let's try. Come on, shoot me, shoot me in the face. <laughs> oh, you can die. <laughs> cool, fun little game. Okay, this is great. This is just a fun little game. I love this. It was like multiplayer and uh, maybe like some sound effects for screaming when you hit the other people or something. That'd be cool. But anyway, great job. This is nice. This is nice and sweet. I feel like um, skill is everything in this game. That's really cool. I'm really enjoying this, actually. This is uh, much more fun. I am the sort of a person that enjoys these sorts of games. Either these or turn-based games, right? All right, um, good stuff. There's really, this is, yeah, this was fun. I really enjoyed this one. When I saw the city builder asset pack, I instantly knew that I wanted to make a procedurally generated town. So that was what I began with. I made a grid of buildings and then drew lines of roads between them. And just like that, it was my first hour gone. And the second hour I spent carefully matching the road tiles to make all the corners and the intersection points fit together nicely. And that was all the time I had for the city generation. So I gave it the quick lighting and post-processing effects and called it a day. Now I wanted to move on to the gameplay, but there was still one more thing left to do. I had decided that the gameplay should only take place in the middle of the screen. 
so I made a custom material to grey out buildings at the edges. Now to the gameplay. My idea was to make a bidding game where the player has to compete against the AI and bid for different height buildings. And although the asset pack only had a few variations of buildings, I cut them up to add some more. And then I also set up the buildings in Godot, giving them the roof node that could be colored differently based on the ownership. Now I also wanted to have an auction button with a circular timer. And as I didn't have a circular image, I used a shader to create it in code instead. And when finished, I attached it to the top of the building using the camera's unproject position function. So next, I start to work with the NMA AI and the game loop, and it turned out to be simpler than I was expecting. Each player simply has their own node, and if it was set to be AI controlled, it just independently beats based on its parameters. And for the game loop, I used a simple time-based loop with victory points as the winning condition. In the end, it turned out really well, I got quite hooked myself, and I hope others will also like it. All right, so this is city bidding, and I think I'm, I think the game's already gone. This looks super good. I can see some global little mission. Okay, wait, wait, okay, okay. So we got a progress bar, right? I, do I click this? I think I click this. Okay, so I've got nine hundred. I've got seven, six, five, six. Okay. I, I'll just click it a lot. So are we? We're bidding on this building, is it? So buildings will generate money and money allows me to bid. Okay, let's restart this game. Okay, so that's the rent every turn. I got it. And so we all have to bid on, oh, that's cool. I like this. So just from the name city bidding, I'm assuming that I'm bidding on these like city blocks. Is that true? Okay, and when I click, a number goes up. So I think I'm, I'm bidding on these. I'm not totally sure what's going on from the UI here. The music and the effects are very pleasant. This is a very nice looking game. Right, city bidding. So I'm probably bidding on, on the city buildings. Somehow, somehow I'm not, hmm. Not certain what the game, <laughs> I can sort of grasp at the gameplay a little bit, but I'm not 100% sure about that one. But how do I know if the AI is gonna like bet on it or not? Oh, God damn it. <laughs> this is, Buying a house in Dublin simulator. No matter how much you bid, there's always someone that bids more. So green is broke. Blue is the only content and, and I can now bid pretty aggressively. Yes, nice. There's a lot of numbers going on. I mean, visually, this looks fantastic, and I love how there's the grayed out area around it. The perimeter that I'm looking at is the one with colors. That's fantastic. Oh, so maybe I'm yellow. Whenever I click, it turns yellow if I bid. Okay, I see. Oh, okay, okay. I think I'm starting to get it a little bit. So there are, there's colors on the buildings. Yes. I also really like how the camera is slowly moving. That's just such a nice touch. The sound effects in there are everything you'd expect from sound effects in a in a game jam game. Visually, I love the game. In terms of gameplay, I'm I'm still not sure what I was doing. This is really addicting somehow. This is kind of fast paced and ruthless. I just keep getting ah oh, dang it! I keep getting outbid by red here. I sort of I grasp the idea that you're bidding for the buildings, but I don't know what the end goal is, right? So there's blue one, right? blue one, okay. I get it, blue one, but how? Let's try this again. Okay. Nice and slow. Right, that thing is going crazy fast. Can I click on these? No, I can't click on those. No. Oh, ah, it is doing something. I don't know what. Okay, 1,700, if I just go all the way up. Oh, come on. Spend all you got, you greedy bastard. You can have it. Why did Blue... Oh, they won because they had more money than me. But I came second, and I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, this is cool. I wonder how they did this, like... 
desaturation thing. Because this works against humans, but against AI, it's like, what is it? I don't know. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm yellow, aren't I? Is there a restart button? Do we have a console? No. Okay, I've got 2,000. Everyone's got 2,000. I don't... <laughs> Why did that go up so quickly? No, don't care. You guys just do this. Do this by yourselves. Okay, how about this? I'll just go up to a hundred, a thousand. Don't? Yes. Excellent. So I think so far, the music and the graphics are great. Like, I really like this. The lack of a tutorial or something is really um, not helping me out here. And I'm not sh totally sure what the objective is or how I... Like, can I measure how I'm doing versus other people? Also, sometimes these bids come in so fast, it's hard to see what's going on. 1,000, yeah. 1,200, my god, no! Oh. <laughs> Why did I do that? Is this what bidding feels like? Yeah, super fun game. Way too addicting. <laughs> how did red... Oh, yeah, right. Now, I was... Um pretty close to winning and I'm very happy about that. I think it just seems like maybe you've just got to be really aggressive at the start. Gosh dang it. All right, I might play this one more time, but I think I've, I've seen what I need to see here. Um, man, overall, super cool game. Again, graphics, vibe, sound, music, really, really good. It's the level of polish is super high for eight hours. So that is really impressive. No, no, no. Hey, I'm Christoph, one of the developers for this jam and the developer of a game called Cardbob. I love making 3D games in general, and so this jam was an absolute blast. I went with the furniture and prototype asset packs as my partner got me hooked on the idea of a game about an uh, office chair. <laughs> I decided to make a game with mechanics I haven't tried building a game around um, in the past and finally settled on a golf-like controls for the player where they have to choose the right direction and fling strength to hit as many enemies as possible, but all of that turn-based. I started by importing assets, creating basic player controller and building the very first testing level. Enemies, turn system and stat labels all work very, very well and damn 3D labels are a lifesaver. Added a visual representation of the enemy's range, tweaked the lighting, but went back to the previous look eventually. Anyway, I just preferred it. Made a projectile manager and some first attacks started happening. Uh, I love static variables, by the way, they're great for game jams, prototyping, It just make they just make your life easier. Dealing damage started shaping up with juice, labels updating their numbers, and this is when the game started to feel like a, a, a game. This is also when I decided to sort the enemies by both their distance and health, meaning that if you get enough many attack points, you can now destroy all enemies at once, which feels amazing by the way. As I was coming up to the fifth hour of the eight hour game jam, I worked on UI elements, scenes, buttons, you know, the things that no one really wants to do, but they've got to be in there uh, to make the whole experience enjoyable. You know what I mean. Uh, then I got an idea for a system that would spawn exclamation phrases that got put in as well and was amazing when playing. Lastly, I focused on level design and found myself with 30 minutes to spare, which I used to implement map objects that buffed the player, something I didn't know whether I was going to have enough time for. That was it. Cheers. All right, so this is Intern Dungeon, and the text is very small for my monitor. Click anywhere, uh, click and drag anywhere to attack. All right, let's give it a really big smack. All right, I guess this is me in the middle here, and I click and drag, if I remember. Click and drag anywhere to attack. Ah, all right. <laughs> this is awesome. I really like it. Also, the little like pogo stick effect or the sound effect that you get when you bounce off something. Um, that's really cool. I'm a big fan of this game. Really, really cool particles like floating upwards. And I won. It says something about alt for preview ranges. Oh, okay. So is that is that the range where they can attack you, maybe? Let's see, I have 11. And I used all my attacks. And now got two damage. These two damage me. Ah, oh, because I'm in their range. All right. Failed here a bit. Oh yes, nice. What a nice attack. So will I now also attack the other guy? 
Ah. Ah, all right. All right, I got four. Maybe that's a good place to end. Oh, nice. So I took two out. Oh my gosh. I'm like literally right out of their attack ranges. So I guess I, I don't get hit there. That was um totally what I, I meant to do. It was exactly like I planned it. Oh, and now I have a lot of, lot of collisions and should be able to kill them both. Right, so it's... The graphics look nice, um, even for being, you know, in a basement. Just using a little bit of directional light here has a really nice effect. Yeah, this is super cool. I want to win now. I have to get a coffee for my dear colleagues. Thankfully, I'm really grateful that your attack arrow expands all the way down, that it doesn't, like, run out of range after, you know, a couple meters or something like that. So that's nice for someone who's not very good at these types of games. Um, but all right, cool. It has so many features. I, I'm really surprised it was made within so little time. Wow, okay, so, oh, this is cool. So some of these dummies have different HP and different attack values, so. But if I'm giving, giving it a really huge smack. Ooh, five. So I can have two rounds where this guy will hurt me. No, one more. So now I need to be careful. Just enough to get out of range again. Yes, okay. Man, that's like really awesome. I am impressed with the fullness of the combat system that you implemented into this game. Just like dragging around, hitting people, um, having different <laughs> intern zombies that have different levels of health and attack. That is really awesome. I am very impressed. And to have like four basically different levels built in as part of this game. Um, in eight hours, and to have full screen and windowed buttons. I mean, come on, now we're just showing off at this point. Nice, and now you're done. Boom. I would like to play it more. <laughs> I, I, I guess currently it has too few levels. Nice. And that's it with Engine Dungeon. Really funny game. Hey, and welcome back. You made it through the whole video. What a behemoth crazy amount of work in that video from everyone involved so if you have feedback for us or if you like the game in particular or found inspiration let me know in the comments or let the others know in the comments that would be amazing and if you like the video leave a like leave a subscribe for my channel uh, i'm working on a new game for quite a while it's called engraving it's a horror exploration game where you're trapped in an ever-changing forest and you have to find your way around and out of the forest by drawing a map. So if you think that's a cool idea, head over to Steam and I would love to get your wishlist on the page just to increase the visibility a bit. That would be awesome. So see you the next time. I hope the next time will be a development log of engraving and we'll see how I manage to do that. So, see you the next time and bye!